Hey folks, now that I have a few days into the Diablo 4 Season 4, I just want to give a quick overview of some of the new stuff and give it a bit of a comparison from the perspective of somebody who's been playing Last Epoch the last few months. So let's jump right into it, and I think it's important to start with saying that even if Diablo 4 is not a game that you like, if you don't like Blizzard or any of that, that's totally fine, but as ARPG enthusiasts, it's in our best interest for every ARPG to be as good as possible. We want them to be competitive, and we want them to be uh, improving the genre as a whole. Having some ARPGs that are not up to par is not good for any of us. Even if you want to play Path of Exile or Last Epoch or any other ARPG, you want them to be all competing with each other to be as good as possible. So with that said, let's jump right into it. So one of the first things that they've done in this new Loot Reborn uh, branded season launch. They've added a system where affixes on a item have a chance to roll higher than is normally possible. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so here we are uh, in my stash. You can see there's a bit of a UI change here. And here are the purple affixes here. These are higher than is normally possible to roll on the item. You can have one or more of these affixes. So if we move over here, here's some examples where I get more than one of them on a single item. You can have, in theory, as many as possible. And these do add a lot of flavor to the loot system in the end game. Oh wait, sorry guys, uh, this is actually last epoch, my bad. Um, sorry about that. That's embarrassing. Okay, here we are. Uh, so this is the new system that I'm talking about. You can see here they have the little stars on the item. Each one indicates a higher rolled affix, and it adds a lot of excitement to finding loot in the end game because there's always a chance, no matter how good your item, you might end up finding one that's just a little bit better. It has maybe a second higher affix or a third even as possible, and even unique items benefit from this system too. You can see here, this is higher rolled than normal. I even have one of these rings that has a higher rolled resource generation. So I think one thing that is a little bit of an issue though is the now that a lot of these things are tied to the legendaries, so if they have an aspect, if an item drops as a rare, it's basically useless uh, and there's a lot of clutter still from those rare items. Uh, I don't really like that. If there's no point in picking them up or using them, then why, why am I still dropping them so deep into endgame? It doesn't really make sense. Um, yeah, so it's just a lot of clutter there. And another issue is that because so much of the gold value is baked into the cell of the items, so you can see here this sells for 50,000 gold, uh, it does create an incentive for players to pick up so many items that they're probably never going to need. In contrast, here we are in Last Epoch, you can see this is an item that isn't particularly useful for me. It sells for 31 gold, which is basically nothing. So I actually have no reason to pick this item up at all. There isn't really the aspect system, the legendary whatever is basically baked into your character and your skill trees. So I have no reason to pick up this item. And another thing that's really nice is you'll notice this is actually filtered by my loot filter, which is another thing that Diablo does not have. So I don't even need to look at the items that aren't useful for me because they're already filtered out. And yeah, I think that's a big thing that Diablo is missing. There's all these crap items that you still end up picking up and you're either salvaging it to get the aspect upgrades or you're vendoring it to get the gold. And that forces you to go back to town and vendor way more often than you need to. It interrupts your gameplay. You're not just continually blasting because you have to take all these breaks to do stuff, inventory management or whatever. And yeah, that's just not really the same issue in Last Epoch. That's definitely a huge thing I think Diablo needs to work on. Uh, so I'll quickly talk about the new codex system. So if you're not aware, if I salvage this item with a aspect, that goes into my codex and it maintains the highest value that I have. So in this case, you can see uh, there is a 68% roll here. It goes from 50 to 80. Say, for example, I've previously salvaged a 60% roll on this, and then I salvage a 68. That 68 goes into my codex, and whenever I apply this aspect, I get the 68. Then if I drop an 80 and I salvage that, now the 80 goes into my codex. So because of that, you're still going to be picking up 
all of these legendary items as long as you still need to upgrade your aspects. Uh, but on the plus side, it's a lot easier for you to manage your staff because you don't need to keep a huge stockpile of aspects anymore. Uh, so that is a huge improvement. I'm only keeping potential gear that I may or may not use. And most of these things I could just salvage. I don't really need them. And I think that that's a huge upgrade, especially to replayability, where if I want to switch builds, it's not a huge amount of effort for me to just go to the enchanter and I can slap an item in here. I'll say my wand. And then here we go. Here's all my aspects that I can just pop on and they all have the good rolls. So in a matter of minutes, I could just take my whole gear set, whatever still works, and just swap it onto a whole other build. And maybe I want to play ball lightning now. Maybe I want to play whatever, fireball. Just swap in the FX, and I'm basically good to go. So I do like that quite a bit. It's a huge upgrade, and it's a lot of quality of life that we didn't previously have. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the other new crafting systems that they've added. So another one is tempering. This is a bit of an upgrade from before. Um, so now items will only have three affixes. If they drop as uh, legendary ancestral, you'll have the three and you can still reroll one of those at the enchanter. Uh, but you can also add a pseudo fourth and fifth affix. They're not the same set of affixes as the other three, uh, but you have some degree of selection on that. So if you're a last epoch player, it's kind of somewhat similar to the legendary potential system. Not quite because this, this isn't unique items, but it's a similar idea where you can choose what extra affixes you add. Uh, so in this case, um, let me just grab a random item. So here we have a ring. It has three affixes. So we go to here, go to tempering. I throw it in here. These are the extra affixes you can add for a ring. So say maybe I want something resource related. Here we go. We'll temper it. Have a little animation that you can skip if you want, which I will. And bam, there we go. It selected that one. So there's a bit of random component to this. And it also uses up uh, a tempering too. So we go here. You can see the temper rerolls will be replaced. And you see at the bottom here, tempers five of five. So if I want to reroll, maybe I don't like that one. We get the same one again. And now you can see I have four rerolls left. So let's also add a different one. So maybe I like Frost playing Blizzard. And there we have Blizzard damage. That's not actually a good one, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so yeah, now we have five affixes. Pretty cool stuff. I like that a lot. It adds a lot more agency over what your gear looks like. And it's a lot easier to get generally good gear. And mostly you're just searching for those uh, higher tiered affixes like this. I have the star on the life. This is what you want. This is the, the chase of endgame now. And yeah, it's a lot more streamlined. A lot of the dumb affixes like extra 5% damage increase on Tuesday, that stuff is all gone too. So that's really cool. Uh, so next we'll talk a little bit about master working. So in the master working, they replaced the previous upgrade where you can just upgrade items whenever you want. Now you actually need a certain end game material here that you get from the pit. So this incentivizes you to actually push your character the further you go into the pit, the more of these resources you're going to get. So in general, you can upgrade your gear more. This goes up to 12. This also works on uniques too. So here we have a unique. I've upgraded it a couple times. And yeah, so it gives me the bonuses of the affixes. And yeah, this is, this is really great. It makes the end game a little bit more flavorful. You can continue scaling your character a little bit longer. Another thing that they've also done versus previous seasons is they've consolidated some of the crafting materials. So you can see here, instead of all the different herbs, you have to run around and get all the time in the world, uh, which is a huge pain. We now just have the bundled herbs. Uh, I believe we've also removed the silver ore. Uh, so we just have the chunks. So this consolidation means you're not often just running out of one material that you need to go and then target farm. The only thing is that the end game is just from the pit. So that's the incentive to do the end game system. Pretty cool. And yeah, this is definitely a pretty big improvement. We also, if we go to the alchemist, another big improvement here is there's a lot of conversion recipes that you can do now. 
so yeah, you can also see here the bundled herbs are used for all the potions. So instead of specific herbs, you have the bundled herbs. This is a big improvement. And here we also have the uh, a sink for your obols, so you can craft these special potions that are actually pretty strong. Um, so that gives you something to do with all those extra obols. The limit is also higher, so that's another little improvement. And yeah, so overall this is a lot better. And here's the transmute, so there's a lot of stuff here. They use the consolidated resources, this is pretty nice. Here's the Uber thing that you can use the sparks on. This was actually added in the previous season, but you can salvage Ubers and then use those resources to get a specific Uber. So this reduces some of the crazy RNG that we had in previous seasons. Uh, so in season three, I believe I killed Duriel 1200 times to get my, um, my Shaco, and that was extremely painful. And they, they actually added the system right after I finish that so that would have been nice to have but yeah so this is this is a huge upgrade and you can also convert down the end game system so if you're doing really deep into the pit you get these expensive ones you can downgrade it to the medium and then the light so whenever you find a new gear you have to level it up from one all the way back up to 12 and yeah so you can convert down in general you're incentivized to do the hardest difficulty pit that you can because you get the most resources the only thing that as I said before, it's a little bit annoying. You need a lot of gold if you're going to be doing that. And if you're not engaging in trade, most of your gold is going to either come from the whispering cash, which drops quite a lot, or it's going to come from vendoring the uh, items that you find, which is extremely tedious and a pain. So I'm a little bit concerned that if you're not trading a lot, that gold might be a bottleneck for you. Uh, I guess we'll see. I'm still early in the season. I don't know if that's actually going to be the case. Um, but yeah, that seems like it might be a potential issue. Uh, but yeah, in general, I think the pit is a really cool system. I like it a lot. Uh, so we'll go here. So this is the pit. As you continue going through the pit, you get the higher tiers unlocked. So right now I'm at 64, uh, which I believe is equivalent-ish to a round tier at 100 Nightmare Dungeons. So... Um, that gives you something to do, something to progress, and there is a reason to do it because of the endgame materials it gives you. The only thing I think is a little bit annoying with the pit specifically is that there is no glyph experience. Um, so I guess if you want to compare it to Season 2 where we had the Avatar of Zir, at the end you got a bunch of glyph experience. Now you don't from this uh, the pit. So that means that once you reach endgame on your character, you probably, even though you could be starting to progress into the pit, you're not going to be doing it because you need to do Nightmare Dungeons to level up your glyphs. So I think that that might be a bit of an oversight. It's like players probably want to be doing the pit and begin working on their Mastercraft, but they have to choose, do I want to work on making my gear better or do I want to level my glyphs? And it feels a little bit weird that you're forced to choose one or the other. If you're able to do higher tier pit, you should be working towards those higher tiers. Um, yeah, so that's just a minor little complaint about that, but otherwise I do like the pit overall. Uh, they've also added new, harder versions of the endgame bosses. So for example, you have the Varshan mats. You can now combine that with a material that drops from the pit. Uh, so specifically higher tier pits. So you're, you're going to be dealing with pretty high-end characters by the time you get here. Uh, but once you do, you drop the higher tier material, you combine these, and then you fight the empowered endgame bosses, which have uh, a better better loot drops. So that's really cool. I like that there's a lot more stuff that you can actually do in the endgame, and it doesn't end up just getting boring quite as quickly as it did before. The other thing that I think is a really nice improvement that I briefly touched on is the stash space is significantly better. Now that I don't have a mountain of aspects that I'm just saving in case I change builds, I have so much space to use for what I actually want. And I think that in general, this sort of thing helps replayability a lot. In previous seasons, I didn't really want to make new characters because I just didn't have the space for the aspects I needed. I had one main build, maybe for a couple classes, and then most of the tab, I'd have like one tab for all of my sorcerer stuff, maybe one tab 
for some uniques and then another tab for like say barbarian and it was just full of backup aspects like if i got a high roll i would just keep the aspect because i'm going to need it if i ever want to change builds and that's not really fun and even if you change gear too like you find an upgrade you need to have an aspect ready to go for whatever was on that previously um yeah so we just have so much more room in our in our stash now and it's it's pretty nice i like it a lot of uh, a lot of big improvements here the hell tides are also a lot more exciting the density is much higher there's a lot more stuff to do it seems like it's a little bit more difficult overall uh because of uh, some of the new enemies that are stronger so that's pretty fun. You can level your character purely in Helltide if you want, which I, I think is, is cool. And yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a big up for Diablo 4. So I'm, I'm going to quickly wrap this up. I'll say that Season 4 in general is a lot better than previous seasons. I like the loot system that we have now. There's still a lot more flavor that we really need in the end game. So, for example, I think the uniques are still a little bit bland and boring compared to, uh, for example, Last Epoch um, that has the LP system. And they've added a lot of flavor to the legendaries, which I do like. With that said, do I think that I enjoy it more than Last Epoch yet? I, I still think it has a way to go. Last Epoch, as of right now, is still going to be my favorite ARPG, and I will be going back to it pretty soon. Um, but yeah, definitely, um, definitely a good job here done by Blizzard. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.